was one example of such uh, mission-oriented programs to focus on one specific area and to focus the efforts uh, in a very concentrated way. What could be some of those areas for the, for the future is an interesting question. But also to be overall more result-oriented and to um, help design mechanisms to accelerate innovation diffusion as well. In terms of public sector efficiency, uh, the, recomm the recommendations were really to improve uh, efficiency uh, in terms of monitoring evaluation mechanisms within the private uh, public sector and allowing greater facility to relocate investment into more productive sectors. So there is a, there is a clear agenda there and this would also generate uh, greater accountability. So st traditional strengthening of public sector efficiency is, is important. And then in the last area, in terms of reforming the business environment, a number of, uh, of challenges were, were addressed here. First of all, the heavy reg regulatory burden, uh, infrastructure deficit, and also the need of reform of a tax system. So that's, uh, that has been um, in the making, and many of those reforms are actually also um, you know, part of the government's agenda currently. Uh, but the group examined also a number of uh, promising initiatives that are being implemented by the Brazilian government, including um, tax system reforms in particular, but also looking at legal security, um, environmental licensing, um, technological innovation promotion laws, and some other uh, more detailed issues. So I'll stop here, uh, because we could go into a lot of detail of the report. The report is available online if you would like to look at some of the details, um, and we are available que for questions afterwards. My colleague, Jean-François Tintin, who has been um, uh, managing this project over the past, uh, not quite a year, but the past months, will be also available for questions here. And I'll hand over to um, to, to some colleagues in f to, for um, for their reactions, and we, let's start with, uh, with the minister. So, minister, it would be pleased, it would be great to hear from you um, where you see the value in such a multi-stakeholder approach in particular, and um, how do you see the government take, it, take those recommendations forward? Bom, primeiro, meu bom dia a todos. É muito gratificante poder estar participando desse, desse painel, Aliás, eh, o Fórum Econômico Mundial tem sido um parceiro estratégico para o Brasil, com quem nós temos compartilhado o ideal e temos de termos uma economia cada vez mais integrada com o mundo. Eu avalio de forma muito positiva nós termos tido a oportunidade de fazermos de forma integrada com o setor privado, que é fundamental along with the private sector, which is essential to develop all the points we want to develop with an open dialogue, with a candid dialogue. And from these discussions, we've had not only a diagnosis, but that actually reflects what the federal government has already been taking into place. May that be in the innovation area that has been mentioned here. And aside from everything that needs to be done, we already have reports and assessments on the past reports as to the national IT law. And I can see Secretary Marcos Vinicius is in the audience. And he knows that we have worked on investing on P and on R&D so as to streamline the process to have third party audits that will involve the private sector that needs to invest on R&D. Over the past years, the government has ha, has played an important role in this, and the private sector also has to play an important role in this sense. We did not manage to get the translation, but um, uh, thank you very thank you very much for for your for your comments. Let's move on to the to the private sector view, and it would be interesting to hear from you, Andre. How do you see that this could unlock employment and investment opportunities in the country? Well. Uh, first of all, um, I think that uh, this, the, 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 the first idea of getting together the private sector, the academia, uh, and the government together on a such well timely uh, moment uh, for the Brazilian um, transition, it makes this report extremely important. Not only, not, not, not only for simply re comparing Brazil to other geographies and how far back we are in, the, in this issue and so on, but most importantly because it allows us to uh, form an aspirational agenda. What, where do we want to be 
in a few years from now. As Brazil transitions, as this uh, government and this society and uh, the private sector are uh, eager to support reforms and to, to have our industry uh, to be back on the game, the report show is, is timely. This is the time. I think we're, the, the World Economic Forum was very happy uh, in choosing the timing of releasing the report. Not only, of course, the, the diagnosis and the suggestions and so on. It creates a base for an aspirational uh, agenda. We need an aspirational agenda. After almost four years of disastrous uh, economic uh, underdevelopment, to be able to dream again on where we can be together is essential on a transitioning period. Um, the second thing uh, it puts on the table openly that what brought us to here will not us take, us take us to the future. Therefore, a reformist agenda is essential. And it's happening. It's actually happening. The, my, the, many of the uh, reports, recommendations, are somehow becoming law or in Congress being debated or being implemented by many uh, of the actions of the ministry. That, that just yesterday, very important Industry 4.0 uh, release on the ministry policy. Mm -hmm. We have a, even a secretary of uh, microeconomic reforms. Mm -hmm. This is being the, discussed inside the executive power. So the time is right. The attitude is even better because it puts the ground on where and how Brazil can be back to reindustrialization. Brazil has deindustrialized over the past 10 years. We've lost a share of the industry in our GDP from 22% to 8. And when a country loses that, the country loses the ability to absorb innovation in order to gain productivity. So the time is right. It is the time of recovery as the economy go comes back, as our uh, clients from Siemens. Siemens alone has a large industrial base in Brazil, one of the largest of Siemens in the world, almost 3,000 industrial employees working in our factories and so on. Our clients are revamping their current uh, capacities. Mm -hmm. It's a recovery of industrial capacity, re um, recovering machines that were stopped, mm -hmm. and why not do that using the digitalization efforts and incentives that the, the government is, 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 is planning. And it creates, the report creates good understanding around a very important theme where Brazil is lagging far behind. So that's our impression of the report. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege and it's a it's, a, it's the right time. Congratulations. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, you know, it's good to hear that there is some momentum going because that's obviously also a window of opportunity for continuing the reform efforts and this, uh, the reforming agenda. Lourdes, it would be great to hear from yeah. you, you know, some of the, on the importance of the dialogue, you're participating also in the, in the dialogue, but also from your point of view, working on multinational companies, how will this uh, change the business environment in Brazil? Uh, thank you, Margareta. Just uh, one word about a beautiful documentary I saw recently about uh, Ayrton Senna when he died, and in relation mm -hmm. to what you just said, when he died and they bring the, the, the corpse uh, from the plane, you see a woman coming from a favela running and saying, you know, in these hard times, it was the beginning of the 90s, we need a dream. Huh? And, and, mm -hmm. so, and, and Ayrton Senna was our dream. So then. As you are saying, Andre, I think uh, what I am very happy is to see this opportunity, this, this momentum that seems the Brazilians always optimistic and saying, yes, the new government will bring uh, reconciliation, hopefully, and hopefully we'll move forward. So let's hope so. 
Uh, one of the points that we discussed in the in the in the in the report and that we discussed in our numerous conference calls and thank you Jean Francois for doing this great job of coordinating all of us is that there is investment sometimes in technology there is investment not sometimes there is investment in technology in innovation in Brazil in uh, sometimes as again in 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 laws in relation with competitiveness etc but what we see lacking is the monitoring, the necessary evaluation, adjustment. So these are all definitely low-hanging fruits. So just by looking at what has been done, and we have here a minister who has been minister for a while in different governments, so the need for continuity, and within this continuity, this necessary monitoring adjust, to adjust and to evaluate, and also the need for coordination. I think one of the richness of the debates was to work with the WEF, with, with the private sector, with the government and academia. So then that is very important. In Brazil, you have FINEPI, EMBRAPI, you have EMBRAPA, you have so many, so many institutions, also the government, the ministry. So how can you coordinate all these efforts? How you can bring them together? How can they, you encourage the dialogue? And these are all very low-hanging fruits and centralized a little bit. Then things like sometimes you cannot evaluate because the data is in different organizations. There is no coordination about the data. And then the data is, is, is lost. So if you cannot evaluate properly, how can you move on? That again, we discuss this uh, definitely with a, with a, definitely with a, we discuss within the, the committee. And also, as Margarita was saying, the private sector. So the private sector, a number of things have happened in Brazil. One is that, as we have said a number of times, the, uh, the, the, the economy was closed. So to a certain extent, well, no, was not completely closed, but was closer, more closed than other, other countries. And then what happened is was a little bit cozy atmosphere within the private sector that was not facing a complete open economy. This, of course, this is changing. Does, that's one factor. Another factor is that there, are, have been, there has been so much volatility in, in, in uh, Brazil that the private sector was worried about the next mm -hmm. quarter and not worried about the medium term and the long term. And also the private sector has been relying on the uh, the public sector investments in, in R&D. So the private sector now has to take the lead, the responsibility to be part of the solution and to be investing and working together. And I think that's very important. Another issue that has been discussed again in the web and we discussed extensively as well in the report is the question of skills. So the need to education, not only education, but the skills that will help the, the, the worker increase productivity. And I think we'll leave it at that. Great, fantastic. And that allows us also to thank you for thank you both and this allows us also to open up for questions for the panelists and on the on the work that has been done. So the floor is yours. No? Any any questions? If not, we'll will Minister, would you like to comment maybe on what the other panels have been saying? Sim, com certeza. Quero fazer um... Yes, I have some comments I'd like to pose. One thing I found to be truly interesting about everything that was said on the report is the fact that we need to monitor public policies. That is something that is in line with the current government's perspective. All efforts undertaken by President Temer have gone in that direction. Let me give you some examples. The National Council for Reduction of Bureaucracy. The Monitoring and Assessment Committee for Public Policies. And also the Board for Economic and Social Development. So we are truly concerned about monitoring and assessing public policies so that we may be aligned with what has been said by both other panelists, including Andre, who says that there is a feeling of urgency when it comes to implementing public policies and correcting the way we're going. And these reforms, including expenditures cap, labor reforms and others, 
and other advances that the report has pointed out that should be undertaken by the government. And the president himself yesterday mentioned the need to streamline the tax reform and to simplify the way taxes are charged. Infra-constitutional reforms will also need to be reviewed, and we have been working in the ministry so as to reduce bureaucracy, so as to make processes simpler and to improve the business environment, making entrepreneurs' life easier. And there is a great synergy here. We do know that we have to do our best so as to help entrepreneurs. And we have to do that in a very short window of time. This report actually reflects our perspective, the efforts that are being undertaken, the agenda that we have which is focused on streamlining 50 different actions that was implemented by Ministry Marcos Ferreira, both in the industry, which account for the government's actions. We're talking about 22 different institutions and departments. So the presidency is truly trying to coordinate these efforts. Again, I want to talk about the feeling of urgency. And our perspective is that we have a long way to go, but Considering the time frame that we have in this government, we're doing the best we can. This report was very well welcomed by us in the government as something that was needed by us. And I fully agree with, with Mr. Andre. It is the perfect timing to think about the country and to have a joint effort among the government, the public sector, and the private sector, as well as the academia, who play a pivotal role in this process to think along with us so we can improve our country. Before we close. Just a, uh, maybe a mundane uh, comment on, on one of the aspects of the, of, the, uh, of the report, which is we need free trade and we need to open up and we need to think on global markets and I, I would like to address that from the, the humble position of a business person that has clients and how did, does it work in the real world and what, what have we seen in our Brazilian client base and who are the best clients that are surviving the downturn, particularly after a huge reduction of GDP. Our per capita GDP went back almost 10 years in the last four four years. We are in 2009 in terms of per capita GDP. This hits particularly the B2B market. B2B market is when you sell to other businesses, when you're, when you're in the business of selling machines that make machines to make cars, your orders can fall 25% a month and reach zero very quickly because you have a limited number of clients. Who are the clients that are actually surviving and are striving and are growing in spite of this crisis are the ones who decided to bring their intellectual capital and export. They discovered that they can reach other markets, use their talents and internationalize. By doing that, they had to better their processes, reduce their costs, better their products. And as the economy is reacting now and sales in the domestic market is increasing, they are making a, ho a whole lot of money. Every cent in the top line is becoming bottom line. These are the winning and the winners after the crisis are the ones who discovered that the market is the world, is not Brazil. So it's just a small mundane comment on this, which usually creates debate on this. It is a change on the government side, yes, but it's a change on the private sector mindset of Brazil as well, and it, it is very important. Just a small comment. I don't think it's a small comment at all. I think mm -hmm. it's a very important part of the, of the way forward and um, a very important component of uh, highlighting um, product of, of increasing productivity growth going forward. We are coming to the end of this session. Maybe one last opportunity for questions if there are any in the audience.
if not, then we will we will close here, and obviously uh, we are available also for for questions afterwards if there are any. But thank you for for joining us, and uh, thank you, Minister and Lourdes and Andre, for being with us on the panel and being part of the project. Thank you.